Hello, everyone. Thanks, you, uh, thanks for being here in a sweaty Paris, <laughs> really hot today. So um, we heard a lot today about logistics, uh, transport, and new mobility insights. And I'd like to add how sharing hardware commons and um, uh, adopting an approach that is open and modular is the key uh, to um, embrace faster the new standards and protocols and APIs that are going to be in this industry. So my name is Yuki, I'm the uh, co-founder and CEO of OS Vehicle. We are a startup from Silicon Valley and our aim is to democratize mobility. We are lowering the barriers uh, into the transportation industry to companies in logistic, uh, connected vehicles, self-driving fleets. And uh, I want to share with you one of our current customers. I don't know where. Okay. This is the government of Morocco. national company of logistics and transportation in Morocco. There is a country that uh, is really committed in renewable energy and they have one of the biggest solar farms in the world. So they wanted to uh, replace uh, the entire fleets uh, of their maintenance and uh, logistic fleets and that's why they wanted to um, develop this vehicle based on our technology. There is a utility maintenance pickup that we presented during the COP22 in Marrakesh in November last year. Okay, so when we started in 2009, OS Vehicle as a side project, while we were working for big transportation companies, we had this basic idea that the world of Silicon Valley, of tech, innovation, uh, chipsets, sensors, and uh, um, connectivity would merge with the old traditional transportation industry. And actually, now it's very obvious it's very obvious and we see how it's going to change super fast this world. And I want to talk about what is happening right now to give you a, a picture of uh, the transportation industry right now. So, the technology in passenger cars and uh, commercial vehicles uh, is basically the same and is going to be disrupted soon. And the ownership is shaking while services are rising. So Amazon now, Uber, car sharing, these are all the vehicle as a service model that are sharing. And this is a market that is huge, $7 trillion uh, by 2050, according to uh, Strategy Analytics and Intel. So only with the B2B um, mobility as a service, we have a $3.2 trillion. So a huge opportunity for all, and it's a market that is rising fast and uh, has more margins. So um, what is happening now, we are going towards a, a future that is green and uh, also more sustainable. Uh, electric mobility is a reality thanks to Tesla and it's also very sexy. And, uh, but, but by putting the battery in our vehicles is not really solving how we produce them. And also what happened next, as you can see from this picture. And uh, that's why also uh, we are seeing a lot of services like car sharing fleets that are running well, but they are uh, used in traditional vehicles that are not designed and engineered for heavy usage. That's why, for example, we have in Italy a car sharing services that is leading in the country. So you can see thousands of vehicles uh, running on the streets of Turin, Milan and Rome, um, operating almost 24 hours a day with these fleets of uh, compact Italian-designed fancy cars. They are uh, 
uh, very successful, but also you, you have to imagine how these fleets can last during, under heavy usage. So can you guess how many years uh, can uh, these fleets last under the heavy usage? Normally these cars are like uh, 10, years, uh, life, 10 years life cycle. So how many years? Seven? No. How many? We would try to guess. Five? One? Okay, actually less than two years, so almost, yes. So a very huge, uh, let's say, not sustainability for these services. And also what is happening now is that many uh, new technologies are emerging, but as you can see from this picture, they are not really welcome. So V2V, V2X, autonomous driving solutions are not really welcomed. So we had to think about how to uh, better design and engineer and produce and also recycle our vehicles. And we started to collect a lot of data during the years from our customers and community, and also from the car manufacturers and suppliers. So uh, we understood that the vehicle of the future should be green, so with batteries, electric powertrain, and uh, also uh, powered by solar energy, so renewable energies, and uh, also re repairable and upgradable in order to generate less waste. And also, we understood that the vehicle of the future should be designed and engineered for services. So, services like Amazon Now, uh, car sharing, food delivery. People now want everything now, from foods to goods to drinks and even weed. So, <laughs> so um, also, we have to, uh, we understood that the vehicle of the future should be future proof. That's why um, Fortune pictured the vehicle of the future like a smartphone. But actually, we think that it's not very accurate because of the form factor. Like a, smart a smartphone is very small compared to a vehicle. So we really think that it's much better pictured in this way, like a computer desktop or server. And actually, this vision has been validated by Intel a few weeks ago, and they tweeted that the future has no cars, but only supercomputers on wheels. And actually, this is a more accurate form fact, format, because you see that it's a vehicle. And what is, why, compared to a desktop, a server PC? because it needs to be upgradable, it needs to be uh, uh, easy to replace and upgrade parts uh, for us, uh, like chipset, sensors, sliders, and all the connectivity solutions, and uh, uh, also the computing power. And also the vehicle of the future should be designed and engineered for services, like I said, so people will, uh, will care more about the experience of the service, also to recognize better the service brand instead of the car brand. So uh, it will be important to recognize the parcel delivery, the car sharing service, and also the food delivery. So how we can enable all of this, okay? With open solutions, so through um, open sourcing parts and also providing detailed documentations in order to have software developers and engineers reducing the reverse engineering time close to zero. It's a very, very complicated process for them right now with the traditional vehicles. And also with open solutions, we are able to reduce the R&D time and also the time to market and enable multiple players to develop and also test and deploy and also release new models that can be seamlessly integrated in the vehicles. And the other factor that is key, actually, for um, the future of the car is that modularity is really necessary in order to uh, enable the replaceability of parts and upgradability. So the modularity should be applied to the exterior parts, uh, so in order to uh, facelift and uh, integrate uh, some uh, um, hardware stack for connected car and autonomous driving features easily. 
and also in order to replace uh, the exterior parts that can be damaged during the heavy usage or maybe during some accident. So all these are hardware stacks, riders, cameras, sensors that now you can see very ugly attached on the traditional vehicles should be through modularity and uh, embraced and uh, integrated seamlessly. And also, we under, uh, how to enable this through the modularity in the key components of a vehicle, like electric motors and uh, even battery packs uh, once uh, the several cycles are making them exhausted. So it's very important also to be able to replace, for example, also the chassis in case of serious accident. And uh, it's very important modularity also for the interiors in order to uh, replace uh, components like armrests, seats, and also uh, tables under heavy usage because people, uh, when uh, are using a service, will be, of course, affecting the interiors. And modularity enables this replacement easily. But also, in, uh, modularity enables uh, the replacement uh, and also to um, remove seats in order to have more cargo for the logistics. And even you can remove uh, steering wheel and uh, also the seats, uh, retake them in order to uh, be ready for the level five autonomy. Okay, so actually, um, all of these are ingredients, necessary ingredients for uh, the future of transportation. And uh, these are also the ingredients in order to uh, be ready to embrace new protocols and new standards. And actually, the bad news is that no companies are really providing this solution with all these ingredients. And uh, uh, that's why we work days and nights hard, very hard in order to provide uh, this, that is edit. Introducing the future of the automotive industry. A ready to use road legal vehicle designed and engineered in Italy. Featuring a platform that is entirely modular, allowing vehicles to adapt to any situation any location, any need. A truly adaptable vehicle designed and engineered for services. The modular platform allows for truly future-proofed vehicles ready to easily repair, refurbish, and upgrade any part necessary with flexibility to choose even up to level five complete autonomous driving. A fleet of self-driving, truly white label vehicles can operate up to 24 hours every day, allowing for maximum efficiency. And because the entire platform is built on a modular architecture, fleets of vehicles can last 10 times longer. Customizable, modular, and upgradable. Designed to last, designed to evolve. Thank you. Feel free to connect with us. Second mic, right? You want to come on stage to answer questions? No, okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah. So, do you have any questions for Yuki? Then I'll have a question for Yuki. So, uh, I, so f I think for a lot of people here, the we share the we share first philosophy, it makes sense. It totally makes sense. But uh, I will just, I'm a, I'm an optimist guy in, in, in real life, but I will be the pessimistic here, right? Um, do you think, so all these companies have grown by closing IP, you know, by growing on their own land, gar walled garden, right? Uh, so you are making vehicles that are, that last, that are future proof, so no planned obsolescence, no renewal, like you're killing the industry more than making it, right? No? But actually, not really. Uh, because we are modular, we are uh, enabling two uh, ways to uh, use also APIs. Actually, there are uh, we are enabling new players, so they are also interested in sharing the data and uh, 
making the adoption of their solution uh, wider and at least shared, okay? So we are enabled this direction, but also, of course, uh, companies that want to own the data and uh, use their own proprietary solution. So we are totally neutral and uh, uh, able to embrace these different directions. So, so you need a, a criti critical mass, right? Critical size, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, today, do you have a support of, I don't know, governments, really important institutions that will help you to fight the old, the other ones? Yes, actually we are assisting to a rising demand from uh, what we call new players. There are governments and also uh, companies from different industries that are not from automotive, so, so IT companies and also uh, many services companies, logistics and, tra and transports. And actually, for them, it's very important to access the data, so also to having a starting point like this uh, that is also not affecting the, f the, the fact that they don't have immediately huge volumes, but that we, they can also be served because we are aggregating through their projects together with other projects using so common hardware and uh, common technologies so in order to reach bigger numbers for the tier one suppliers. So this is how they are enabled to uh, work on vertical solutions for their needs, but also have the access and also the ownership to some data that they are, in many cases, also very interested to share because they want to have uh, also feedbacks and uh, more adoption normally. So governments, smart cities, and uh, even uh, uh, component suppliers. And you begin by B2B, right? Yeah, we are totally B2B. Yeah, so course. they make smarter decisions. Yes, absolutely, yeah. yes. The thing is that we wanted to provide in, uh, the market with a, a, a solution that is totally flexible, versatile, because we don't even have standards yet, okay, for the new mobility and transportation. We don't uh, know in two years uh, the battery technology will be uh, graphene or lithium iron, so many new uh, innovation will arrive, and we don't want to be stuck and take the approach of uh, the traditional car manufacturer to be like locked in one solution and that we really want to also empower uh, more innovation that will come from uh, definitely new players. In we have time for one more question. A question here. So what, what is the open source license? Uh, Creative Commons 4.0. Yeah. Oh, yeah. nice, nice. <laughs> Thank you very much, Yuki. Thank you. Thank you.